Hey folks, this is Yusuf Chan Hunt Dweller. Um, this is a video about the reunion of Rome. Uh, XSC3 on the last video uh, about the reunion with the Vatican uh, to the video X, XSC3 reunion with Rome. Uh, I explain why I don't believe they should be together and he responds to another person in a comment not directly to me he says and yet they were compatible for a thousand years I think you can have diversity while safeguarding tradition uh, I think this is a misunderstanding yes the Roman Catholics do believe we were united for a thousand years commonly with no dispute this is incorrect just as the Orthodox, it takes a while to separate things out, as I've said in the previous videos. Uh, it takes about two, three hundred years for them to figure out a, whether um, uh, a council is correct or a theological statement is correct or something should be followed. This is why, just because so, some bishop may say, oh, uh, cats are wicked and you can't have them in your house, doesn't make it orthodox at all, or you can't smoke cigarettes because you'll go to hell. It's worse sin than anything else. Uh, yet to be seen. Uh, thousand years, 1054, okay, uh, was the, the schism, and it was caused by Rome, because Rome sent a guy who couldn't speak Greek over to the emperor, and he started getting annoyed that nobody else would speak, you know, why can't these people speak Latin? They're they don't live anywhere near Latin speaking people, but they should be able to speak to me. So he got annoyed and excommunicated them. That's not how it started, though. Uh, Photius, uh, in, I believe it was 900, saw the Filioque because uh, they had uh, the creed up on the side of the church and they had it in Latin and in Greek. He writes, he's, what? What is going on? What is this? This is, they changed the creed? That, no. And he started, that's, it started uh, the argument of like, wait, the, the Pope thinks he's greater than the other bishops or that he can tell them what to do and they think they can change things. And so it was, I mean, that's when it started getting heated up. But really from about the 5th or 6th century, we start seeing a departure. Uh, with the Orthodox, it's not you do something wrong or you say a, a, something that's against the eligible statement, you're instantly, boom, you're cut off. No. <clears throat> so it really took about 600 years for it to happen. Uh, even prior to that, we see uh, in eight in the year 800, we see the Pope of Rome, Leo III, who was an iconoclast, crown Charlemagne, Christmas Day, year 800. The Holy Roman Emperor, while the ancient continual Roman Empire still exists, uh, it's kind of strange. That's it, that's as if the Chinese in the 1800s were to claim themselves to be the Holy British Empire. It's a very odd thing for these Germans, very Germanic people, to say we are the we are the Holy Roman Empire. Well, your ancestors were the enemies of Rome. Okay, it's strange, but let's go back before 800. Uh, we see Augustine, and this is where the split really comes in. Uh, Augustine, who lived in the in the fourth and fifth centuries, started bringing these ideas, original sin and stuff like that. Uh, into the church and even the the way the thought processes of the the, the world view the perspective uh, the philosophy of how and why of everything in the theological matters and in, in worldly matters uh, we see a stark contrast between I mean even modern day look at the Orthodox look at the Catholics the Catholics think a lot like along Protestant, well, the Protestants, Protestants think along Catholic lines, where the Orthodox have this uh, 
a different way of viewing things. Uh, m multiple ideas can be in harmony with each other, but still not seemingly to agree with each other uh, in the Orthodox Church because that's just how it was played. That's what we were given. Um, this is what we were told. We're going to accept both of them and with equal weight. Uh, Augustine started bringing in his ideas, and as everybody knows, well, some people may not know, but I think everybody on here knows, <clears throat> the uh, Orthodox reject uh, the uh, vicarious redemption through Christ's blood, reject original sin. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of these ideas that were from ancient times. So I would have to say, from about the fourth century, we see the two drifting apart, uh, and the split was probably good because we might have the Orthodox Church might have wound up taking on all that Augustinian stuff, you know, uh, or the hey, I mean, the Catholics can look at it this way: look, the Roman Empire in the East was a lot stronger. If there would have been uh, basically one language, you might have had all that stuff that the Catholics value so much being thrown out. I wonder the because and it really is touching the Roman Catholics like they you know they view us and I think they should as as their brothers. Um, but there's kind of a double standard here, although it's not really a double standard. Because the Orthodox were, are the ancient church unchanged, There's no, there was no more councils after the Seventh Ecumenical Council, so, and we were still in unity with Rome, I think that the, the Roman Catholics have to say, you, you know, yeah, they are the ancient church. But when the Orthodox look at the Roman Catholics, we can look at them up to the point, even up till um, 1054. But like I said, even going back, it's still kind of uh, iffy. And say, wait, you started changing a lot of stuff. You have attacked us in the Crusades. This, and that. Although I don't want to bring all that stuff up. So I, I do see that there is probably a lot more love coming from the Roman Catholic side. I think that's good. Uh, but, okay, transubstantiation, purgatory, original sin... I mean, basically every single council that the church has had uh, from Second Nicaea until now. Uh, <clears throat> their view on the Pope, their view that uh, things can be changed overnight like that with the Pope. Uh, all, of, all of that. I mean, again, what a slap in the face to the Roman Catholics if the church were to reunite. Rome would have to would have to take all that and just scrape it off. I mean, like scraping off icing on a cake, just literally throwing it out. Uh, so that's why I say it's it's never going to happen. And the anybody in the East who has ever reconnected with Rome uh, have always been considered traitors. A lot of times they've done it under sword point. I mean, there's a period when the the Roman Catholics really were forcing the Orthodox into conversion, and it continued up until, uh, well, at least up until uh, 1700s. I mean, Peter the Aleut was executed by the Spanish for um, not wanting to convert to Roman Catholicism. The <clears throat> and even the way uh, the Catholics had treated the indigenous people of America, I mean, you see the Orthodox come here with Christianity, there was no force, and they were allowed to keep their traditions. There's totem poles with Orthodox saints on them in, uh, in Alaska. But there's uh, those who reunite with Rome are no longer Orthodox. I mean, they're called the Byzantine Catholics, but they're, they're really not Byzantine at all. Uh, and even then, they're not allowed to keep their traditions. You, we see that Rome keeps in, encroaching and, and saying, no, well, you've got to change this or that or, you know, so it's not, oh, you can come back to us and you'll be left alone. That's not been our experience. So, no, there will never be reunion with Rome. There already are, if you want to go be a Roman Catholic and, and 
do it in a very orthodox style, I guess you'd say. There are plenty of Byzantine churches out there. Uh, in Aurora here, we have two Romanian Romanian Uniate churches. And I realize Uniate is not a, a word that the, the Eastern Catholics like to hear. But you also... You have the Malkites, which were originally Orthodox and then went back to the the, uh, the Pope. You have uh, the Maronites, who were always a Latin rite in the Holy Land. Uh, Malkites, Maronites, and I, I forget the other one. But there's always been that. In Rome, it's very strange. They reestablished the connection with Ethiopia. Um, I know that happened a long time ago, but... So they're already reconnected to an ancient Orthodox see, which Ethiopia is under the Oriental, not the Eastern, even though they're the same words. I realize that the non, they're non-Chalcedonian or were Chalcedonian. So, I mean, I would like to hear from him. What does he, what does he think of this? I mean, is the Orthodox view just invalid and regardless of what we believe or what we feel, we should be reunited to them? Uh, if we reject, I mean, I think that's, I, I really, access C3, you're watching this, I respect you, I like you, but do you expect us to, I mean, that's, that's almost like the Christians and the Jews trying to get back together. I know it's, the Christians and the Jews are far more apart, but, uh, than the Orthodox and the Catholic, but if we were to get back together and say, well, you know, you reject Christ. We we have them. Let's let's get back together. Yeah. Well, we agree upon Christ, but there is a lot of heavy stuff that we don't. I mean, would you get back in reunion with the with the Protestants and say, well, we'll we'll meet halfway with the Protestants? Unfortunately, I think that actually happened during the Counter Reformation. I think it happened again under Vatican II. Uh, but would you like to see more of that happen? The Catholic Church move more to the Protestants to try to meet them halfway to try to get get more people, quote unquote, under the church. All right. I, I hope again. I hope this video did not offend anybody. It's not my goal. It's merely to explain uh, the problems with reuniting uh, the four ancient seas: Jerusalem, Antioch, Alexandria, Constantinople. That's in reverse order with with Rome. Uh, I would love to see Rome come back, but not going to. Peace to you.